Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, April 25th. Yes, April 25th, 2019. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope everyone's having a great week. We are almost done with the week. It is almost the weekend, y'all. Um, yeah, so this is a general energy reading, okay? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below. Also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So this doesn't have to resonate for the day that it comes through. Whenever you are guided to listen to it, then that is the right time for you to hear it. Yes? All right, guys, let's just get straight on into it. Let's see what we've got going on for today. Ooh, that was hot. <laughs> All right, messages from spirit for today, for this moment in time, or for, for whenever you watch this video. Yes? Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Thursday, April 26th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, so interesting. The, the colors, remember yesterday the colors were purple and blue. Today the colors are purple and pink. Um, it's still, you know, wisdom pouring in. Divine wisdom, divine knowledge. Some of you may really be working on your studies right now is absolutely what that could mean. Um, the purple could mean, you know, really working hard. I don't know if maybe there are um, midterms, not midterms, maybe final exams coming up for some. Um, but there's definitely a studious energy within or represented by this purple energy. Pink also. Now the pink is unconditional love here. So for a lot of us, we're kind of going through an integration process of a lot of the things that we've learned, a lot of the downloads that we've received over the last few months. So the pink is like, <laughs> Spirit just said an emulsifier. If you're not aware, an emulsifier is something that helps, you know, combine, uh, combine things together. It's a binding agent um, of sorts. <laughs> so the pink energy is like helping us integrate. It's unconditional love also, and that makes perfect sense. Of course, it would be love that would help us integrate, but that's really kind of cool, actually. All right, one more shuffle for today. Thursday, April 25th. We're almost in May, guys. We almost are in May. Ooh, ooh. Okay. That didn't work so well, so I'm gonna give this one more shuffle. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go, Thursday, April 25th, 2019. Let's see what we've got for today. Thursday, April 25th. There's that Ace of Swords again. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. So the two cards that came out face up so far, Ace of Swords. Oh, three cards. Page of Pentacles and the Two of Wands. Excellent. Now, underneath the deck, ooh, we've got the Seven of Swords again. Now, the Seven of Swords came out yesterday with the Seven of Wands, but both of them were in reversed. But here... This is upright because I really feel like you're going through a situation in which the bamboozlement 
interesting because bamboozle was on my mind <laughs> as I was starting the reading. Um, <clears throat> but any sort of bamboozlement or um, deceitful situations, you know, whatnot, whatever, I really believe, I feel like it's coming to light here, especially with this Ace of Swords. Okay, between the Ace of Swords, the Page of Pentacles, and the Two of Wands, it's almost as if you're standing, <clears throat> you're standing in defiance to whatever is represented by the Seven of Swords, and rightfully so. I mean, why would you want to let deception get you down, stop you, or what, whatever? Okay, um, let's start with this one. We've got the Knight of Pentacles, the Empress with the Seven of Cups. I gotta move this over again because this is another big spread, you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, Knight of Pentacles, Empress, Seven of Cups. Underneath that, ooh. We're gonna turn this up right. Three of Wands, Nine of Cups, Six of Pentacles, and the Chariot. All of that was reversed. But Spirit's saying it's meant to be upright. So we're keeping it upright. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're standing in defiance, all right. Deceptive energy, deceitful energy, okay? But it, it, it's like you're standing in defiance, but that really is come. That's really expressing itself more in your right to choose which direction you want to go in with this Two of Wands energy here. And you're, it, it's, it's, it, for some, for some, it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be petty about this and I'm just going to, I'm going to be a brat about it and I'm going to really like defy you and go against the grain. But that's not, I mean, that's not the biggest thing that I'm feeling. Most of the defiance that I feel is you just standing on your own with your own truth here, Ace of Swords, okay, in a commitment towards doing things in a different way, a commitment to yourself with the Page of Pentacles, having reached a new level, and this is definitely where the divine wisdom is coming into play, that purple energy I was picking up on, and choosing a path, choosing a new direction, regardless of whatever this Seven of Swords energy has to say, okay? That could be connected to the Hierophant energy that we were talking about yesterday, right? Underneath that, you have the Knight of Pentacles, the Empress, and the Seven of Cups. So you're moving slowly but surely, steadily, piece, uh, pace by pace, step by step. Um, there is a great deal of patience here, okay? With the Empress, there's abundance, there's, there's healing, there's uh, nurturing, okay? And then with the Seven of Cups, it's like there's things, that, it's almost as if you have a bunch of different ways that you can go. A bunch of different things that you can do. The Empress and the Seven of Cups energy is very conducive to each other. I think that's the right word. They are harmonizing in this moment because the Empress is representing abundance and just options and saying, you can do whatever you want, my child. What do you choose to do? And so with this Seven of Cups energy, you're kind of like, God, what do I really, what do I want to do? This feels very good right now, this Seven of Cups energy. Sometimes this can be confusing. It can be overwhelming. Um, it can represent a bunch of different things that you have to deal with in order to heal. But here, it just feels like options. Coupled with the abundance that the Empress represents, and I mean, hell yeah. <laughs> That's great, you know? Sorry, guys, I just want to fix my lighting here. Okay, that's better. Okay. And then finally, on the bottom row, you have the Three of Wands, Nine of Cups, Six of Pentacles, and the Chariot. Three of Wands is saying absolutely that you're on the right path. There is some, some of you that are waiting on somewhat of a return on an investment, as you could say, or you're waiting for some sort of ship to come, 
to come in. But the Three of Wands to me lately, it's just been confirming that you are in fact on the right path. Now you've chosen, okay? Either you have chosen or you're about to choose. You can come, okay, because you're going from the two to the three. And there's gonna there's satisfaction that's coming in here. The the most beautiful thing about this is between the chariot and the six of pentacles. You could be dealing with a Cancerian. You also could be dealing with a Tauran or a Capricorn or a Virgo um, with this Knight of Pentacles here, but that doesn't matter. That really does not matter. This is more about the energy of the situation, okay? And between the Six of Pentacles and the Chariot here, there is a hell of a lot of balance and re reciprocity. It's almost as if you're success is ensured because of your balance between give and take here okay with the six of pentacles um doing your mission work uh you know doing some sort of charity work maybe giving back in some way being of service to yourself and others and allowing others to be of service to you you know you learn that lesson of reciprocity what goes around comes around that sort of thing. This divine wisdom that I'm feeling and this pink energy, well, the, the pink, the, 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 the purple and the pink energy, yeah, purple being the divine wisdom, pink being the divine love, is setting the record straight, Spirit just said, for a lot of you, um, and is, def it is, illuminating any sort of defiance, backstabbing, cheating, lying, deceiving with the Seven of Swords here. And the unconditional love that is pouring in with the Divine Wisdom is allowing you to st really stay balanced, the chariot, and move forward in your life. Move, on, move forward towards bigger, better, greater things. Which is badass yes so ooh, i'm going to get some clarification now and i honestly i really think i want to do this uh, oh i do want to point out you remember yesterday how the hierophant was in the dead center of that really big reading right and um the empress did come out but she came out she was like over here on the side and um she was a healing energy. She was a nurturing energy, yes. Well, now she's in the center. And if you haven't checked out that reading, go ahead and check it out. It's from yesterday, the 24th of April. Um, I don't quite remember what the title was. Oh, good lordy, Miss Molly. Good golly. Good golly. Good golly, Miss Molly, you guys. We've got some flyers here, okay? Um, but if you haven't checked out that reading, go ahead and check it out. It's quite intense. It's all about um, releasing yourself from status quo and and um, institution and whatnot and control, um, taking your power back, really. And the Seven of Swords is an extension of that energy. Okay, but here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We go. Go. We go. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see what card this is. This is death. And it came flying out. It landed on the Six of Pentacles and the Chariot. Um, but what's most significant is just the transformation that this is representing. You have the Knight of Swords, which is like a warrior energy. And you have the Queen of Wands with that too. I mean, confidence. And talk about defiance. I mean, you want, a def you want defiance here? Yo, check it out. You got defiance in the Knight of Swords working with the queen of wands the queen of, queen of wands is like the honey badger honey badger don't give a fuck <laughs> okay so i mean and it's the, both the king and the queen are very much like that but you see in this situation this is not this is not necessarily just from ego yes there is some sort of ego involved i mean okay 
sure. But I really feel like the ego is in check, okay? This is confidence. This is surety. This is knowing who you are and what you stand for. And with the Knight of Swords energy, not allowing anyone to get anywhere near you to try and knock you out of that, of your sense of self, your sense of belief in yourself, your, your assuredness, okay? Also, the Queen of Wands is Aries energy, which is cardinal energy. So is the Chariot or... Uh, cancer, okay, um, Cancerian energy. These are trailblazers. These are energies that do their own thing regardless of what people have to say about it, okay? The King of Wands is very much the same. However, he's fixed, so he's not really going to be trailblazing much. The Queen will. Oh, yes, she will, okay? And thus, there's a major transformation that's happening with death, okay? Uh, and the Knight of Swords energy is like your bodyguard basically all right so that's beautiful guys okay so now we're going to get into the official clarifier um i want to give this i want to give this five shuffles for the change that's coming through so one Too. And I have been saying this. I said it during um, the lives that I did yesterday. This is three. But I have totally stolen this technique from Rich Lop. <laughs> this is four. So if you guys want to go ahead and tell him that, be my guest. <laughs> and five. All right, guys. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did yesterday. And I'm just going to... Um, my shoes are in the way. I'm just going to hold it over the center of the reading here. That's why I was pointing out that the Empress is in the center of the reading. Yesterday, the Hierophant was in the center. Today, the central focus is the healing, the expansion, the abundance. Yes. So that's good. So I'm just going to hold the cards over the center of the reading. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to sneeze. Or not. Um, and just let the cards come out and let the deck speak, okay? So, clarification. All right, well, we look at here. Already, first of all, we have the Ace of Wands underneath the deck. Yesterday, we had the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands come out. So this is definitely an extension of yesterday's, yesterday's energy, all right? So let's see. Just some clarification, please, spirit. Oof. Oh, that's beautiful. You see, do y'all see, do y'all see? <laughs> Good Lord, look at that big old mess. Oh yes, at the bottom of the deck we have the lovers. The overall energy for the clarification is the lovers. All right, that's beautiful. You also have the two of cups that came out here somewhere. Yep, right here. All right, 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 all right. Ooh, and judgment, okay. Wheel of Fortune, yes. Okay. <laughs> very interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, guys, let's see. Um, where does this go? Okay, I'm going to put this here. And then... Four of Swords is in reverse. Okay. First of all, I want to point out that the Five of Cups has flown out all the way over here. Okay, so um, I, I really feel like, you know, that any energies of like regret, remorse, shame, guilt, sadness, loss of some sort, that's, I feel like that's like about, it's not on your mind anymore. That's not the focus, okay? Because it's all the way over here. All right, that's a good thing. We have the Four of Swords in reverse that has fallen out. Um, and, and at this point, yes, this kind of makes sense because with the Ace of Swords energy, I feel like you've gotten the clarity, you've gotten the change in perspective, I guess, that you may have needed in order to, to tar start taking some action here, okay? Next, we have the Empress again. So the Empress has come out twice with the Devil, but also the Eight of Swords in reverse. So this is telling me that you're really... 
you're removing yourself from this prison, okay? And you're removing yourself from any sort of toxicity um, represented by the devil here. And instead are embodying more of the energies of the empress, the, um, the, the abundance, the healing, the nurturing, the motherly aspect of the situation, okay? You're trading <clears throat> scarcity, codependency for abundance and freedom. That's excellent. Okay, on this Knight of Pentacles here, we have the Two of Cups, Judgment, and the Page of Wands. I absolutely feel like for some of you, this is a new relationship, a faded one with judgment. Okay, <clears throat> uh, like the universe aligned this for you. Now, it also could be on the Knight of Pentacles here. Did I say, I don't, I don't know if I said that correctly, but on this Knight of Pentacles, you have the Two of Cups, the Judgment, and the Page of Wands. This is also, more generally, this is uh, the balance between masculine and feminine. It is uh, a union within. It is, the Two of Cups and Judgment can talk about an ascension, um, you know, finding deeper union within, which is allowing you to go in a new creative direction here with the Page of Wands. Wanting to learn more, wanting to experience more, wanting to, it's almost as if you're wanting to take your newfound balance and like explore it, um, um, test it out, you know, like you got a new toy or something. Like you've got new powers or something and you want to like explore them, yes? Next you have, on the Empress, you have the Three of Pentacles with Justice, okay? So again more balance, self-mastery here. Teamwork too, it could be teamwork, but this is really also like a sense of self-mastery that is bringing greater justice into your life here. Now, moving forward, we have on the Seven of Cups, we have the Moon, Three of Wands, and the King of Wands. So the Seven of Cups can, can be somewhat of a distracting energy for you a little bit here, which, which is what the moon is kind of confirming. But you're on the right path because the Three of Wands has come out again. And then we're going to go to the, the original Three of Wands that came out. But here we have the Three of Wands um, with the King of Wands, okay? And the Queen of Wands made an, appear made an appearance earlier. So we have counterparts here, right? So this is confidence, being sure of yourself, knowing exactly what you want and going for it. But knowing when the right time to strike is, is the key to the King of Wands. And that's also what the Three of Wands is representing here, okay? So they're going hand in hand. So yes, you are in fact on the right path, but with the Seven of Cups, there is a lot of illusion around you, okay? A lot of options, possibly a lot of distractions. And with the moon here, it's saying, the moon is really saying that the, a lot of these things are just distracting um, and are not, and things are not necessarily what they seem to be. But relying on the king of wands energy is going to help you illuminate those things and just get straight through it without any trouble at all. Okay. Right next to that, you have the star in reverse with the two of pentacles. So either you've gone through some sort of healing and... Um, you're maintaining, you're working on maintaining balance or you are in a healing process and working on maintaining the balance. Which could be why there are so many different illusions around you with the Seven of Cups. Okay. Staying balanced, staying grounded with the Two of Wands, I'm sorry, the Two of Pentacles energy, yes? So then finally, we have the Wheel of Fortune on the Three of Wands, the original Three of Wands that came out in the beginning of the reading, okay? And you have the Wheel of Fortune. So things are changing, you know, a major, I just heard for, I just heard a major step has been taken. <laughs> There is a lot of balance 
and harmony here. You have justice, you have the lovers as the overall energy, you have the two of cups, you have judgment, you have the two of pentacles. There's a lot of balance here. Integration. The overall energy, the overall theme for all of this, all of this change between death that flew out and now the Wheel of Fortune that's also here, all of this change is absolutely influenced by divine union within, which is so gorgeous. So, so gorgeous. You guys, this is beautiful. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna close out the reading and I'm gonna use the Lightworker Oracle this time. Again, because it was so good yesterday. It was so perfect. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. And actually, this time, I'm gonna give this three shuffles for the Empress because the Empress is the energy that's really, it's the binding agent. And Empress is number three. What was it that I was talking about was the emulsifier. I can't remember now. Anyway, we're gonna give this three shuffles for the Empress to bring forward some guidance, oracle guidance in terms of this transition because this is definitely a transition. Definitely a transition. One more. And let's see what we've got. Best message, please, spirit. Okay, there we have it. There we have it. Ah, card number 16, Dark Knight of the Soul. Very interesting. Did not expect that, but at the same time, I'm kind of not surprised. Very interesting. Okay. Dark Knight of the Soul. You are ready for a more real and radiant relationship with the divine. Your preconceived ideas and safe limiting beliefs may be sacrificed in order for this to happen. To the divine, you are only the clothing of your spirit. You are, no, I'm sorry, they are impediments to the absolute intimacy the divine seeks with you. You might feel vulnerable or uncertain as the divine goes about stripping away these barriers. This is when you enter the dark night of the soul. You understand there is nothing to rely upon but the divine, and you will find it difficult to trust at times. This night will end, however, and the sweetness of the divine dawning in your heart shall render all worthwhile. But for now, you are meant to feel exactly as you feel. You are not doing something wrong. You are moving closer to the divine. That actually is quite perfect. Um, gonna read a little bit more. Even though you are already on a spiritual path this lifetime, you can go deeper. Sometimes people know this and yet are afraid. Familiar with emotional drama, they are hesitant to let go of what they know, even if this is emotional suffering and mental anguish. That fear prevents them from being willing to trust in the loving hand reaching out to them. It might seem silly, yet letting go of fear to take hold of the hand of love can be extraordinarily difficult. If you don't trust that love will hold you, letting go can seem like allowing yourself to fall into an abyss. A feeling of madness may plague you as you wonder if you are sane to leave a known world behind you and enter into the darkness of your own doubt and fear. You sense that the old self and the familiar ways will survive this dark night. Even, even if you know in your heart that this sort of spiritual death is an opening to new life, it can still be profoundly con comforting, um, confronting. Excuse me. The only way to end the dark night is to go through it, to endure it and know that although you will not understand how it could be possible, it will transform itself into the sweetest grace. 
in time you shall be on your knees, not in despairing prayer, dearest child of love, but in gratitude, peace, and devotion. Though it begins as a challenge, the dark night of the soul will become a saving grace. Love knows you are ready. No matter what you may think in this think at this moment of struggle, you are ready to take this spiritual test and emerge more in love with the divine than ever. Remember, this is an advanced initiation and therefore challenging at a profound spiritual level. Therefore, get some support. Even though you walk the path alone, another can help bear witness to your process and remind you that you are on a noble path of empowerment, love, and truth. Also, although you may feel your guidance has abandoned you, in truth, they are with you ever more closely, whispering words of encouragement, hope, and love. Look for the love within and let it guide you through the dark night. It will lead you faithfully and in perfect divine timing into the light of your sweetest morning. Gorgeous. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Please don't hesitate to hit me up if you would like <sighs> excuse me if you would like your own personal reading go ahead and do so but other than that i hope you guys have a fantastic day and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning yeah take care Mwah. bye